Hello there, and thank you for tuning in to see what the world looks like through atheist eyes. I'm Frank Zindler, the managing editor of American Atheist Press, and I'll be your host for this series of programs that I prepared for American Atheist Television. Today, I'd like to share with you the fourth and the last of the interviews that I had with John Loftus recently. Today, we'll be able to learn about all the books he's either authored or edited. Well, we have one more program with philosopher John Loftus, our atheist philosopher who has regaled us with some interesting stories and information. Today, uh, I want to uh, have him tell us about the many books that he has authored or has edited uh, uh, collections of uh, works, anthologies. You want to talk about my books? Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. Um, let's start at the beginning. Uh, his first book, Why I Became an Atheist, and we've already heard quite a bit about him uh, becoming an atheist and why. Uh, that is available in a second edition. Uh, which has a much nicer cover, by the way. Uh, I, I do think that that was an improvement. I assume you in, you corrected or improved the inside too, <laughs> not just the cover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's rare that an atheist book goes through a, a second edition. And, yeah, you know, that is and, really amazing. And so uh, I was honored that they uh, they they thought that was worthy. And uh, yeah, I packed it full of about a hundred more pages of yeah, text. Yeah, it seems I, much more substantial. I rewrote some of the sentences to make them flow together and added new arguments and new documentation. And that's the book that uh, I want you know you to read if you, if you read one. It's, it's my magnum opus. I might have said that earlier. And it contains, uh, you know, it's a counter-apologetics book. It's Christian apologists have been putting out uh, apologetics sure. books for a hundred years and more where they deal with a wide variety of issues in defense of Christianity. Well, that is basically uh, what I want to see it as a counter-apologetics book because it, too, will delve into a wide variety of issues, uh, you know, from a, you know, a more skeptical point of view, an evidence-based view, and not just single-issued book. Yeah. It, it's a multifaceted book which contains a cumulative argument that uh, you know, cumulatively it points to the uh, you know the delusion of, of the Christian faith and um, you know doc things like hell and Satan and uh, <clears throat> what history can show uh, the resurrection of Jesus uh, the inter yeah. witness of the Holy Spirit uh, science the interface of science and religion of faith and reason and it contains a chapter on the outsider test for faith, uh, you know, yeah, as yeah. well as where the Bible came from, mm -hmm. and um, you know my personal story as well. The poor evidence of historical evidence. Yes. I like that. <laughs> it, it, his, history doesn't give up its truths very easily. You know, it's 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 hard to extract from history yeah, what yeah. actually yeah. What happened. Does morality come from God? Yep. It's it's uh, quite uh, it's it's. Quite comprehensive, at least uh, yeah. I think so. And it really so. is. Uh, I, I hope you'll all rush out and order that. Well, I think the next on the pile here, Why Faith Fails, The Christian Delusion, with a foreword by Dan Barker from mm -hmm. FFRF. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get some other people's uh, thoughts and arguments in, uh, in this, my second book, and uh, I wanted it titled after Dawkins' book, The God Delusion. Uh, and so, you know, I've set out to, you know, edit some anthologies that you insert the word Christian in, in place of God. And I got some people that uh, honored me by the, uh, writing chapters like Robert Price and Richard Carrier, David Eller, Valerie Tirico, Hector Avalos. And I know that when I start mentioning names, I'm going to miss some. Yeah, well, you've got Babinski, Ed Babinski, and Tobin, Paul Tobin, and they deal with a wide variety of issues. In uh, and some of them I've raised in in this book that they deal with in, in a bit more depth and uh, some are new. And um, yeah, I uh, was quite. It, it was a tough book to put together. You know, yeah, to, first yeah, you got to get yeah. the people who would be willing to write new essays. Uh, from their perspective, and uh, it's, it's received some critically uh, acclaimed uh, uh, accolades. Yeah. Uh, I should say to our viewers, um, 
several of these authors are authors also for American Atheist Press. I've published two books by David Eller, That's right. an anthropologist, and I think three or four books now of Robert Price. Yes, so, yes, yes. so you've got the right people in here. Yeah. Now you have another anthology, The End of Christianity. Yeah, I believe that came out in 2011, and it's another anthology. This one is based on Sam Harris's title, the, uh, the end of faith, and so I again inserted Christianity into the word faith, and, and we deal with a lot of different topics, some not covered, uh, you know, by here, because I, I want to provide a comprehensive, and, you know, uh, set of books that if uh, somebody had, they would have every, you know, yeah. almost, or almost every yeah. argument on their finger tips to, uh, to defeat a Christian apologist, and uh, you can you probably rate that. Yeah, uh, I, I notice here that you uh, have um, uh, something by Victor Stinger, yep. uh, Life After Death, Examining the Evidence. We hadn't covered uh, that topic before. So yeah, I think a lot of people out there are probably fans of Dr. Stinger. Could you say just a teensy bit about what he has in here? Well, uh, he, uh, he actually is dismantles uh, Dinesh D'Souza's arguments on behalf of life after death and he he D D'Souza wrote a book on that and uh, in that book D'Souza says well, I'm just going to appeal to reason itself and show that there is life after death well Victor Stenger just tears him apart just tears him apart and uh, yeah we're, we're all going to miss him yeah know? yeah he true. just recently died yeah, yeah. okay God or godless well uh, I got one atheist one Christian ein Reich ein Volk <laughs> 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 Twenty controversial questions. Let me. Take yeah. A look. Now, Randall Rouser wants to engage atheists, and he's a Christian philosopher, having you know written several uh, you know philosophy books defending the faith, and he uh, he asked me to be interested in you know in write, co-writing this book, and so what we did is we each proposed ten questions, <clears throat> ten propositions to be resolved. And uh, I would write on that proposition, then he would write on this proposition, then we'd have a few more, mm -hmm. uh, a word limit count, like 250 word limit count, count to rebut each other. And so it's a short little read, it's a bathroom reader, if you will. <laughs> and some of the topics uh, would be, if there's no God, then life has no meaning. That was his topic, his chosen mm -hmm. topic, you see. And then I, I countered, you know, uh, you know, best boulder dash, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a good illustration uh, of, um, uh, not to get into 2D, but where, it, just imagine if 10 of us were locked into a room, what would we, what would we do? And without knowing why we're in the room. Yeah, yeah. Or what we were to do, well, we would find meaning in that sure, room. We'd, yeah. we'd play games. You know, yeah. We'd, we'd take some ingredients that were given us to cook good meals. Yeah. We yeah. would find activities yeah, to yeah. And that's uh, the meaning to we To create have. meaning. Yeah, we would create meaning. Yeah. So if things like uh, if there's no God, then everything is permitted. He, he, he wrote that one. Uh, and my topics center around the problem of evil. Uh, my ten topics deal with uh, the idea of an omniscient God, an omnipotent God, and an all-loving God. Uh, with uh, with topics like uh, child sacrifices, genocide, uh, slavery, uh, the issue of women, um, uh, animals, uh, science. Uh, I, I, here's one called The Biblical God is Ignorant About the Future. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I mean, he didn't know anything. Yeah. He didn't know anything about lead poisoning. Uh, no. Or poisonous spiders. Uh, and he knew nothing about video games. <laughs> or, the, or how big the universe was. Yeah. I mean, or yeah. prophecy. And I talk about yeah. prophecy. He, didn't, he couldn't predict the future either. So yeah. uh, things like that. This is a nice little uh, okay. debate book that people are using in their study groups. And now this, in many ways, I suppose, is your signature book, The Outsider Test for Faith. This is, of course, his great invention, uh, um, although he doesn't take total credit for it, but he did discover it, uh, The Outsider Test for Faith. Uh, and uh, Yeah, that was, that was published in 2013, and I took all of the criticisms that were uh, important, mm -hmm. and I decided I'm going to write a book on them and deal decisively with them. Now there's a couple of things. Some people think that the outsider test of faith is so obvious, I don't need the book. Oh. You know, I mean, the, some atheists, it's so obvious mm -hmm. you don't need yeah. the book. Yeah. Uh, well, here's, here's why I think you should anyway, and that is uh, if, if you are engaging a, a Christian, then 
I think I've covered every objection that they could throw at you. So you'd be ready for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, and some of them have some, you know, good sounding objections initially. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, this is the book that uh, would help you argue that case. And if you're a Christian and you've heard of the outsider test for faith, and you think that, well, you know, that just isn't right because it's inconsistent or self-defeating or, you know, my, my internet witness of the Spirit says otherwise or what have you. Well, this actually argues for it in, in length, and I don't think you can escape the conclusion. I mean, there are some people, some Christians who, have having read it, said, well, you know what, maybe the outsider test for faith is the way to test my faith, and then they'll go on to argue that their faith uh, passing, passing the passing. test, uh -huh. but once they've once they've adopted the test itself, that's the point. Once they yeah, once, yeah. They, once they couldn't once they can't escape from the yeah. test and adopt it, then all of a sudden we have a grounds for all future debates. Yeah, and in this, uh, the outsider test for faith asks people to shoulder their own burden of proof. It asks them to look for sufficient objective evidence. So if a Christian is going to read this book and say, you know what, my faith can shoulder the burden of proof, and my faith. Uh, has sufficient evidence, then now we're talking. You know, mm -hmm. now we're talking. Now, of course, I would go on to argue that their faith does not pass the test, but at least now we have uh, uh, the grounding for a all framework future, for discussion. For all future yeah. debates. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now last, but certainly not least, uh, in weight as well as in significance, Christianity is not great. How faith fails. Another collection, another anthology with a foreword by Hector Avalos, the great biblical scholar. Let me hold that. Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> this just came out. There are, there are probably about a half dozen people. Yeah, mine who, has not yet arrived in the mail. It just came out, and it's always nice to have that feel yeah, after yeah. all this work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Year and a half uh, plus of work, and it's uh, a tagline from Hitchens' book, God, uh, God is Not Great. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Christian, Christian Hitchens talks a lot about you know, the harms of faith, the harms of religion, the harms, yeah. harms of, of God. And this decides to, um, you know, let's, let's examine that. Let's, mm -hmm. let's look and see what the evidence is, pro and con, and, uh, you know, from Christians, from a Christian right. perspective. You right. know, Christianity right. itself, not Allah, you know, not Orthodox Jews, yeah. but we're focused yeah. on Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got some really good chapters. There are, there are a number of chapters that are worth the price of the book. Um, I, I even got Robert Ingersoll to raise from the dead. Right, yes, that was a real yeah. trick. He, he was, he was, he was uh, you know, accommodating. God may not know the future, but John Loftus knows the past. <laughs> People like Victor Stanger, Peter Bakhosian, David Eller, some, some of the others that have written for me, I don't think very many Christians know yeah. about the colonization and wholesale destruction of indigenous no. people groups no. that Christianity no. has done uh, down through the centuries, and, and the whole the whole thing about this book is to test the fruits of Christianity. Jesus reportedly said, "By your fruits you shall know them." Yeah, this is actually this testing is, yeah. the fruits. There you go, and tasting the fruits you know, as well as testing the fruits. <laughs> when it comes to faith healing, the dark ages, democracy, the sanctity of life, the LGBTI people, um, the environment, and the a animals, the 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 Christian right, what Christians uh, do to women, or Annie Laurie Gaylor wrote the chapter, Women, Woman, What Have I to Do with Thee? Christianity's War Against Women, and it, that title says about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Daryl Ray, Marlene Winnow, uh, and, um, you know, others. So, and then at the end of the book, we, uh, I got some people to write some object, uh, some answers, some Christian objections. Oh. Like, for instance, how do you, how can you judge harm? Oh, uh, how can you as atheists judge uh -huh. harm without a morally objective standard? That's the usual retort, isn't Goodness. it? Goodness, how can you tell whether you've burnt your finger <laughs> without... Huh. How, how do you do that, yeah, by well, the way? We, we tell that. <laughs> and who can solve the world's problems? Uh, well, only humans can solve the world's problems. That's the next <laughs> chapter. And the last one is what, what, uh, or how atheists can live without God. And Russell uh, Blackford... Uh, writes that chapter. Great. So this is this is great. This great. Is good. Thanks for letting me hold that again. Yeah. Well. Yes. Uh, but I certainly I can't wait to start reading this myself. <laughs> um, okay. Now the last question of all. What's next? Well, the uh, the one thing I want to mention is there's a possibility of of writing and editing another book called um, 
based on Victor Stenger, the late Victor Stenger's book, uh, uh, he, it's called God, the Field Hypothesis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and make it into uh, Christianity, the Field hi Hypothesis. And if all goes well, and it might be a couple years down the road, yeah. it may never happen, yeah. uh, but it's going to be essays by scientists, mm -hmm. archaeologists, uh, people who uh, know something about the uh, the, uh, the town of Nazareth, Nazareth. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, evolution, uh, scientific methodology, you know, um, and uh, the Exodus and the yeah. Canaanite conquest, yes, and, yeah, uh, you know, the genetics behind the virgin birth, yeah, you know, and, yeah. uh, and things like of the scientific nature, and I'm I'm hoping that I might be able to put something together like that. So well, that'll be wonderful. Yeah. That'll be great. Uh, meanwhile, you do have. Perhaps the last essay by Stenger that he's oh that's written. right yeah yeah uh, Victor Stenger wrote an essay for that book yeah should it uh, be published yeah and I am I aim to do that yeah uh, I'm hoping to yeah. do that yeah. but he he wrote a chapter for that book um, even before I even got it together wow so, that's wonderful yeah. so it'll be it might be his last published work well John this has been a wonderful series of interviews and I'm so glad you would come on my show. Uh, this has really added value to my programs, and I can hardly thank you enough. Well, so, well likewise. likewise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored thank you. to be here. Okay, well, that's it with John Loftus, a real atheist philosopher on this show. We'll have something else for you next time. I'm not sure what it is yet, but be sure to tune in and check us out. Former InterVarsity Christian Fellowship apologist Dr. Robert Price gave up Christianity and became one of the most important New Testament scholars in America. In his book, The Historical Bejesus, What a Long Strange Quest It's Been, he surveys 20th century attempts to write biographies of a supposedly historical Jesus. In The Historical Bejesus, Price shows that all attempts have failed for a simple reason. There was no historical Jesus.